Hey everybody, and welcome to the next Brea Jiu Jitsu vlog. I feel like when I do these, we're just going to Las Vegas. And, yep, we're going to Las Vegas today. We're gonna follow Nolan's black belt debut. I'm riding over with uh, Steve-O, who's also competing in the uh, Masters World Championships. We have three mats, Steve-O and Irving, at the Masters. And then tomorrow is Nolan's at the Jiu Jitsu Con. We're just gonna follow Nolan today to kind of make it easier for me. So I'm just gonna wait for Steve-O to pick me up. And you know he's gonna be right on time because old people are always on time. Let's see, let's see what happens. Well, that could have been Steve-O, but it's not. Shockingly, the old guy is late. <laughs> so I'm in a little bit of a time crunch, so I'll explain what uh, my schedule is here. I need to be back tomorrow at four to run two baseball practices. So I have preloaded my car to the gills with all the baseball stuff. And my wonderful wife is gonna set it up for me. And I am flying back right after Nolan's final match and gonna make it just in the nick of time. I'm landing at 310 and gonna be running practice at four. So hopefully that all works out. I'm keeping my fingers crossed there. Steve-O's here. Good morning, Steve-O. Good morning. One of the greatest things here, riding with Steve-O, is check it out. We got Mongo Santa Maria. Give me a thumbs up in the comments if you know who Mongo Santa Maria is. Hey, Mr. Trivia, what are the searchlights for? The searchlights right here on the way to Vegas. So, that is a power plant. And it's a solar power plant, but it's not a solar vo uh, photovoltaic. It's actually mirrors, and the mirrors are concentrated on basically a tank of molten salt right there at the top and it makes it insanely insanely hot and it boils it to make steam which then can turn a turbine which makes power well it continues to boil about six maybe seven hours after sundown and that's what's providing las vegas with a good portion of their power after dark it always reminds me of the uh, the Lord of the Rings tower, you know, you got the uh, Eye of Sauron at the top. You can definitely see those from your airplanes as you're flying in. Well, we made it here safe and greeted by a nice hundred and whatever degrees it is right now. Looks like we're in a new convention hall. Seems like they change it every year and every tournament. Um, but I'm just going to head on over there and corner a few of the Masters competitors and uh, then Nolan tomorrow. I found the man, the myth, the legend. Let's do it. Roadside safety. Let's go. Competing tomorrow, five something, too late o'clock. 
Look who I found. Do you speak English? Do you speak English? Living in Sweden, right? Yeah, this one, this one. That's right, close enough. Uh, not close yet. <laughs> So are you competing at the Jiu Jitsu Con? No, I'm not fight. I'm the only to coach my students. I fight five students fight the Jiu Jitsu. So Burrell, we know you lived at Brea Jiu Jitsu for a little bit. He got married and moved abroad and is opening up. He has his own academy. So pretty cool. <laughs> Go to see Coach Dan he in Las Vegas. Uh, big shout out for all the students in Brazil Jiu Jitsu. I that's hope pretty good English. you guys next year. Look at that, that's pretty good English. <laughs> Alright, it's Steve-O's turn. Steve-O, time to get dressed. Let's go. Okay, let me be a little honest. It's Steve-O's match. Honestly, if he gets through it uninjured at Master 7 Ultra Heavy, I'm kind of happy. If he loses the first, he can still win the whole thing. So it might turn into a little bit of a war of attrition with these uh, older competitors. Let's go, Will. Strong base, Steve strong base. Right hand on the side. Let's go. Grab his collar. First. Grab his collar. Right hand on the same side. Same side. Strong base, Steve it's gonna snap you down and you're not gonna go down. So well, you gotta go. Careful you don't lose your balance. Follow drag, Will. Let's go. Oh, pass. Pass. Let's go, Steven. Let's go. Okay. Establish half guard. Smush it. Put all your weight on him. This will be one advantage if you don't get swept. Steve, his guard's open. Windshield viper. Get to your side, Will. Feed the collar. Oh, no. Keep your face. Use your hands to stand. Yeah. Stay here, Steve-O. Just stay here. Two minutes. Don't, don't get pulled over the top, Steve-O. Don't get pulled over the top, okay? Let's see if you can do an Americana. Let's see if you can do an Americana. You gotta move. Come on, Steve-O. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, Steve-O. Nice job. I would have like half a second earlier. <laughs> No strong down, no strong down. You did a legit take that. That was amazing. Thank you. Great job. I appreciate it. Yeah. Everything uh, good? No injuries? No, no, fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to save this one. This one I'll go on the record for. Uh, while we wait to eat 
dinner, but I just wanted to really say that how proud I am of Stevo of winning the World Championship. And us as an academy, it really shows that we can cover all spectrums from adult black belt high level, uh, possibly world champion in, in the end of it, um, all the way to Master 7. And there's a lot of gyms that can do maybe one or the other, but it's really tricky to do both. Oh, yeah? All right, we're enjoying some no. Indian <laughs> food for dinner. Okay, this stuff, go this stuff is so good. All right, we just finished dinner. It's a nice celebratory dinner. Uh, I'm just walking back to the hotel. Got the sphere in the background, even though you can't really see it because it's overexposed. Um, but I'm going to get some sleep and uh, on to Nolan's Black Belt debut for tomorrow morning. As I walk to meet up with Nolan, I want to talk a little bit about Stevo's matches. Um, the pre-game, pre-game, the pre-match advice for him um, is a little bit different than I would have for some other athletes. Uh, in Masters 7, where they're 61, 62, 63 years old, and ultra heavy, what ultimately ends up happening is they just clash horns and neither one can get a takedown and what happens is double penalties i tell steve-o to let everybody watch and know to get a pillow because those double penalties are going to accrue that's just the way it goes in this category and something amazing happens psychologically when you have these types of matches where nothing's happening in stand-up because neither guy can take each other down um, is towards the end they get this sensation of I need to do something I need to change something that's not working so what happens is they end up either overextending themselves for a takedown they're forcing something and their body doesn't really move the way it should to be doing like a blast double leg or something or they end up pulling guard and in this division being on top is pretty much a win. So that's exactly what we saw happen in Stevo's first match, is that the guy got a little bit antsy, ended up pulling guard, um, and it was just kind of like shocking, um, like shockingly good fortune, I guess that you could say. And in the second match, he earned it. That's why, but I mean, Stevo's hit that foot sweep a precious few times. And he did it at the most important moment, really, of his jiu-jitsu career to date. So that's a little window into the strategic aspect of yesterday. There's the flex, right there, the traditional flex. Now, no one is running late because he's half Brazilian and he traveled with his Brazilian half here. <laughs> so we need to hurry up a little bit. So, how are you feeling today? That, that's about all the words that he says. Now, here's the thing. Somebody came up to me today, just now, and told me something that a world's medalist said about you. They said, how is he so good? He can't be doing, can't have learned jiu-jitsu at Brea Jiu-Jitsu. He must have been learning jiu-jitsu somewhere else. What do you say to that? Not true. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> it's not. He's done all of his training here at Brea Jiu Jitsu. Most recently, he has branched out and started teaching part time, but he was already a world class athlete at that point. And he really is the, the product of 11 years now, nearly, Trumpet Dan Jiu Jitsu. It really is. He's doing my stuff technique wise, he's doing my strategy, strategy wise. The only thing I can't really take super credit for, though we built up here, is the strength and conditioning. Why don't you give a shout out to your strength and conditioning uh, coach? Eric Arvala, Record Fitness. It's re not Virtus anymore. Oh, okay? they changed it. Yeah, so Eric's doing a good job, but 
we developed the skills to begin weightlifting at 11, right? So we start 11? I don't know. You would know that. About 11. Yeah. Uh, and are you competing? She's still fast. She's still fast? Okay. Oh. Take that back and then I'll go just to make it easier for us. There we go. We have the future. We got Miles right here. Miles is competing in the Juvenile 2 division. Miles trains at Sector Jiu Jitsu. He takes lessons with Nolan and occasionally comes and cross trains at, uh, at Brea Jiu Jitsu. And he's going to be Black Belt World Champion in about, what, four, five years? Something like this? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, we're good. You guys are at 10 something, right? 10 20. Can you roll with Nolan to uh, warm up? Yes. Awesome. We'll do that. So I have a warm-up that I like to do for everybody. It's going to be a little tight because it's like 9.38 right now and Nolan's at 10.10. But if there's a submission, these are 10-minute matches before his can get bumped up quite a bit. I like to start with a massage and or foam rolling, then light rolling, long rest, medium rolling, and then just before you go out, I'm a little bit more fake aggressive, like fake aggressive rolling. Uh, we're going to need to abbreviate that, but you know what? The mindset is always like we could just call Nolan out right now to the mat and you're ready for that. You're not too like rigid in your process. as Jackson right there. Um, you're not too rigid that it, like frazzles you if you just need to go right on out there and just take care of business. Jiu Jitsu, please check in. Better. We're getting a better weight for middle heavy. We're a little bit undersized, so still kind of working our way up to true middle heavy. So I can't film this very well, but this is the first step. So I'm gonna go through it kind of quickly because we're a little bit rushed. I gotta put the camera down. Miles and Nolan are just gonna do some flow rolling. It's non-competitive just to get the things moving and I'm gonna go check on things that way you have somebody responsible for warm-up miles is at the same time as Nolan which is wonderful for both of them as far as warm-ups and I'll keep an eye on things with the tournament number nine. so Nolan is next here on mat 14 so I just told him to hurry the whole thing up uh, Jerima should win this one but it should go to decision, I would hope. So, it should have maybe 10 minutes. See, look, it's important for me to keep an eye here. There's uh, Jerima right there. He hasn't started. So if I freak out and bring Nolan over early, then he's coming in a little bit cold when we want him really coming out guns blazing. So that's my job. Everybody kind of has a job that they need to worry about in the tournament. So you even look here, and Jerima hasn't even taken the mat, and then we have them with another six minutes to go. So it's looking all good. And then you communicate with number 14, his mat coordinator, just to let him know, you know, it's no big deal that he's not there. So Nolan's first opponent is from Pedigo, also known as Daisy Fresh. Um, he's a very experienced competitor these last two to three years in the black belt division. He's somebody that seems to be always at everyone, always pulling in a medal. Um, so I would, you know, that's that's the caliber there. But to be honest, I didn't, I didn't bring no one up to be above average. I brought him up to be the best, and he's here to show that he's the best. Let's talk. Today, this first one, you're gonna take his lunch money. You're gonna go out and kill him. There's no strategy. You're just gonna go out and dispatch him and four minutes are under. You got it? You're gonna make a statement. A statement, okay? Make a statement! Woo!
profunda. Sobe. Chegou na casa, sobe. No tempo steals. I want a submission. I want to pass to the back. Keep it in the middle. No tempo steals. Keep it in bounds! Keep it in bounds! Keep it in bounds! Drag him in! Drag him in! Drag him! Yeah! Woo! You can do it! Don't let him bridge over your neck! Good! Plot of crucifix. No, 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 don't let him posture out. Hook his foot, hook his leg with your foot, hook his leg with your foot. Hey, good, hook it. Now get some, get some. How do you feel? Good. Nice. <laughs> That's it. Good job, dude. Hey, thank you, man. Yeah. So, often in between matches, this is true for white as it is for black, you get the uh, forearm tightness, so I'm just going to roll out his forearms, rest and recover, and uh, on to the second match. I don't even know how he did. Miles, did you win your first match? Yeah. How did it go? I uh, stacked up 14 points and got the submission at the end. That's about what you could expect out of Miles. So Nolan's second match poses a much, much greater danger. He's kind of an interesting competitor in that he does have some very well-defined elite attacks. The primary of which is an inverting omoplata to rollover sweep from the lasso. Um, and then secondary would be going into like matrix 50-50 like situations and uh, attacking knee bars and things. So, um, I set up some training sessions with Mustafa Saba. Shout out to Mustafa, who's uh, a heavyweight or so. We'll give him some a generous assessment of heavyweight. Um, and he's the best inverting omoplata guy that is in Southern California, in our, in our area. So no one's been training with that as well as trying to avoid the situation entirely by denying the sleeve grip. So I think when he denies the sleeve grip, he'll want to try and go matrix and we need to invert, uh, uh, to avoid that and pass off of it. Uh, kind of another thing about this particular competitor uh, is that he tends to, if you just push the pace, to uh, break. That's not super common actually at the very elite level, even though his techniques are elite. He can definitely sweep Nolan. He was able to sweep Jansen, the current world champion, with the inverting omoplata. So um, that's going to be kind of the dynamic because no one wants to avoid knee slice. If he does get in knee slice to play a little cat and mouse game with Nolan's right sleeve grip. Um, and then try and pass loose basically. So you're trying to back up. You're trying to Toriando, you're trying to leg drag, you're trying to X pass, those type of things. The more we can bring them in those scenarios, the better it's gonna be for us. Stay. It is double pull. It is double pull. Wow, look at that.
It is double pull. He ruled it as double pull. And the double pull don't get connected with him. Okay, good. If you see something, pounce on it, but control the match from the bottom for a little bit. He's obviously a left leg lead. If you could change his base, that would be good. We'll work to change the base. Top position for a moment. He was in top position for a moment, maybe. Get your grips. It's no advantage. He's winning by one advantage still. I mean, he's kind of giving you the sweep whenever you want it, but control for the year. Change his base, Uma Plata. Change his base, Uma Plata. Hey, change the base. Stay in bounds, stay in bounds. Don't go out, don't go out. Referee, reset in the middle. He'll stop for you. Stop, Nolan. Stop, stop. Reset in the middle. Stop, stop. He'll stop for you. Don't move. The referee will reset it. We don't want to lose our bottom position. Stop moving, he'll, he'll come to it eventually. Give him some good grips to reset. There we go. You've learned that you can change the base? No, 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 bottom, bottom, bottom. Look, you, you know you can sweep him, okay? You know it. Let's control the match here. Attack, Uma Platas, that would be a good one. You're close to the boundary, don't lose your bottom position, that would kind of suck. You know you can sweep. Attack, submission, no, 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 gosh. Now you have to worry about knee bars, stay on the bottom, stay on the bottom. Stay on the bottom, watch the ankle lock and leg attacks. You have to be disciplined and listen to me. Extract yourself. Bring it to you. Control the bottom position, please. No, yes. Loose pass now. He wants your right sleeve, you're not gonna give it to him. Look at him, he wants it, he wants that right sleeve. Loose pass if possible, stack, 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 good. Careful of matrix, careful of matrix. Tempo steals if possible when the opportunity comes. No lasso, make sure he doesn't stabilize and get that lasso. No lasso, no lasso. It, good, elevating the hip. You're not gonna give him that lasso. Nope. Loose pass, look it. Yep, you go to your right off that lapel. Don't get in too much trouble with the work. Underhook the leg with your right. Underhook the leg. There, there, get up. No, no engaging from there. Switch the sides. No inversion. No inversion. Unwind. Preemptively control his lasso so he can't invert. Yeah, you're good, you're good. He doesn't want to take out the lasso though. Yeah! Hey! Look out inversion. Look out inversion, unwind, unwind. Watch Marigali sweep, unwind. 
Yeah, he does. He wants that sleeve. Look at him. He wants it, and you're not going to give it to him. Don't give him that sleeve. He wants it. It's like the ring in the Lord of the Rings. You're not going to give it to him. It's your precious. That's not going to work with the lapel. Just keep note, we are down one advantage. Uh, no, watch your leg, watch your legs. Loose pass, show me an advantage on guard passing at minimum. Grab and go. Grab and go. Grab and go. Grab and go. Show me an advantage here. Out of bounds, Toriando out of bounds, stack out of bounds. Hey, good leg drag. He's not gonna tripod sweep you, make a note. Make a note, tripod sweep is part of his repertoire. Tripod sweep inverting, Uma Plata, and Matrix into leg attack. Come on, Noam, let's get that advantage. At minimum. You have 240, Nolan, 240. You're up by two, down one advantage. No tripod sweep, look, he wants it. You see, that's why he put the foot there. He's trying to be sneaky. Oh, watch the matrix. Heel the floor. Hey, heel the Wait, what the? No, he locked that. Come on, referee, protect my athlete. Protect my athlete. You can't use a heel hook to set up the 50-50. Control the sleeve if possible. No, 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 don't let him do this. Extract your arm, extract it. And you pass. No, no inverting on the platter. Circle your hand out of that. Unwind it. Yank, yank, yank like you want to win. Careful of the back door, careful crab ride back door. Careful matrix and knee bar, careful knee bar. Careful knee bar back door. Protect it all, protect it all. Yeah! No, no, no knee bar, no knee bar, no knee bar, no knee bar, no knee bar. No knee bar, watch your knee bar. Good, 52 seconds, Nolan, 52 seconds. Remember, you cannot concede the sweep if you do attack a submission. All call at the time, 40 seconds. Don't concede the sweep. If you can, extract your back leg. No, no, chill, chill. You can make it worse. Attack his leg if you get swept. 25 seconds, Nolan. 25. No, he's not going to make crab ride, Nolan. Come on, Nolan. Come on. Don't go out of bounds, stay in bounds, up, up. Stay in bounds, stay in bounds, stay in bounds. Stay in bounds, stay in bounds. up, 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 so big, so big. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and... So the biggest mistake in that one was coming on top so early. And it was like he, he was attacking the legs for that hot second. You really should have stayed on the bottom so you could have controlled the match longer. And then you don't have to play with fire for six minutes or whatever it was. Do you understand? You have to guide the match to take place in the realm that you want it to take place. Got it? So this is the winner of this match is who no one's going to face in the final. Now, uh, Jose Jaruma is somebody that no one met with twice in brown belt, pan and worlds. I believe it was the semi-final match in each one of those. He's a high-level competitor who's new, also new to black belt. Rafael dos, Rafael dos Anjos uh, Torres 
is a competitor in the Black Belt Division the last like, couple of years. Young, hungry, and uh, would be the favorite. But I honestly couldn't really predict this one too effectively because they're both kind of like next generation type of competitors who are still kind of like need to establish where they fit in the ladder. So, no one's final opponent is somebody that I would categorize as the elite of the sport. He doesn't have as big of a name as some of the ones that have, you know, around 28, 29, 30 years old, who have been doing it in Earth World Championships. But I know, and no one knows, that this guy is among that category. So this one is going to need a different approach. This one, it's going to be dictated by who can compete smarter, who can make the match take place in their strengths rather than their weaknesses. It's going to be a game of inches. And this is important, regardless of the outcome today, it's important that you build the athletes from scratch that are capable of competing when you're in a game of inches. What happens when the passes and the submissions are few and far between? You know, that's a different type of match than one that you just go in and blow the guy away. So hopefully, regardless of the outcome, we can have uh, lessons learned to prepare us for when it really matters, which is like pans and worlds. So the weakness of him is that he pulls really slow, so he's going to allow you to take the mass. You're going to dictate where and when the mass takes place. I think you'll get to the bottom position, um, no problem, the first time around. But if it doesn't, and he double pulls with you, he just insists with that double pull um, and repeat it a couple of times. And then if he doesn't come up, then we can go from there, all right? He's going to rip it Come up from there if he doesn't come up? What? Come up if he doesn't come up? After a few times. Push 
520 to go, Nolan. 520 to go. 2-0 in. No, he's not going to pull you forward. He's not going to pull you forward. Keep in mind X pass as you go left or right. And turn it into face crank if you... No, not yet, not yet. No, no, no underneath. No pull forward. You felt that now. He's not going to pull you forward. It's too nice. Hey, hey, Stack, stack off of it. Nice try. Good try here. It's not there. Stand up. It's not there. Stand up. Stand up, please, and strip. There. He's going to pull you forward. That's why he's making the collar grip. Don't let him pull you forward. Nice. 430, no leg. No single leg. Good. Tempo steals. Right, watch your legs, watch your legs, watch your legs. Tempo steal, tempo steal. Clear it, tempo steal. You got this, no one. This is a key moment, tempo steal. Tempo, now do it, stay. One advantage, double pull. They cleared the grip. He, they went to stand up and they pulled at the same time. Come on, three referees can't see that as not double pulling up. Double pulling up. He cleared the sweep attempt. He stripped the grip, they were gripless. They both pulled and he came up. That's you, Nolan, that's you. Nolan, there's no advantage. Let's do it for real now. That's you, like, Nolan, Tempo that's steel. you. Tempo Tempo steel, please, for the love of God. Do it again, again. He's vulnerable to the stack, stack, stack. He's vulnerable to the stack. He found the weakness. Tempo steal. He's trying to single leg you. Don't let him spin under. Unwind. 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 Don't let him spin under. Unwind more. Unwind more. He's going to try it in third. Good. No, no. Unwind. 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 Ryan Thomas, check Matt. Come to the checking area. Secure that manga. Control the sleeve. Control the sleeve and pick it up and you'll win. There you go. Now patience. Because he can't single leg you off of that very easily. He's going to try and single leg you for the win. Good. Go on spin under you. Go on single leg you. That's what he's going to do. Like your dad. Tighten up that grip. No, 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 no forward. There's a single leg. You can't, can't do it. He can't do it. He can't do it. Face crank. Step over. Step over. Face crank. That's you. That's you, Nolan. No single leg, Nolan. No single leg. No spin under. Don't let him spin on that single leg. You know it. You have to do your own part now. Rip that grip off. Rip it off. Rip it off. Yes. No forward. Careful, he's trying to pull you forward. Single leg. Don't let him single leg. When he gets up, drive that knee up the middle. Careful, you're too forward. Unwind a little. Unwind a little, Nolan. Left leg. Pay attention to your left leg. 90 seconds, Rafa. 90 seconds. One minute 30, Nolan. 90 seconds. 90 seconds. He's going to single leg you. He's going to single leg you, but he can't do it. You're going to crowd him. No, no, knee up the middle. Here's the single leg. Here's the single leg. Pick up his arm. Pick up his arm. You got it. Crank his face. Make him. Come on. Crank his face. Crank his face. Crank his face. Crank his face. 50 seconds, Nolan. Crank his face. Here's the single leg. No single leg, Nolan. You're going to scroll. Yeah. Yeah. Again, again, take the back. 
So, Nolan and I are not too sentimental, but it's important to reflect that this isn't the end of the journey that we started 10 years ago together, but, you know, the emergence, you know, is pretty much put every black belt out there in the middle heavy division on notice. I'm showing my state of love when it um, Sean, come in here. Sean played a part, especially these past like year, year or two. Nolan's training part time and teaching part time at Sector Jiu Jitsu. So if you want to check out check out Nolan's teaching, you can go over to Sector Jiu Jitsu. It's a pretty good school. So I think this is funny right here. So here is the line for the people who win. You know, very short. And there's all the blue belts that are lined up to buy that stupid show you roll gi. Look at Nolan's gi right here. Wow. Very blank. Don't need it. Hey, what was that? I think Fuji should sponsor me. No. Yeah. <laughs> I can keep doing this. If we could find a decent blank gi where it doesn't have any logos on it, we would. So there's this gi. So while we're waiting for the podium right now, Let's talk about your diet and supplementation. Let's talk about your supplementation. How many supplements do you take? Whiskey, no more chocolate, pizza, and I was cool. He said he does rice and beans and water. No chocolate. Let's do this in English one more time. So what kind of supplements do you take in English? Rice, beans, chocolate, water, coconut water. So wait, I don't, wait, wait, wait. You, you do you take, you take it like a whey protein powder, right? Like a pre-workout? No, I take a, uh, salt, put salt in my water. That's our El supplementation. Element. Element. Yeah, you heard us talking about the, uh, the strength and conditioning coach earlier. He doesn't take any of those sketchy pre-workouts. Nothing, nothing. Just rice and beans, it's rice and beans right there, rice and beans. I get teams, two baseball teams, but it's just going to be down to the wire. And now, I run to baseball practice. Alright, we made it to baseball practice. <laughs>